This is the 80s show on iHeartRadio. Yep, Tuesday, that non-entity of a day. Tuesday, I find to be, maybe it's not the most interminable day of the week, but it's the day of the week where the week feels the most interminable. What do I mean? It means that Tuesday is that day of the week where it feels like there's absolutely no end in sight. You don't have that thrill of, hey, I got to Wednesday, I'm halfway through the week, yay me. You don't have that, oh, now starts the race to the finish line that is the weekend uh, that you get on a Thursday. You certainly don't have that Friday feeling where you're like, oh, it's F this S o'clock. And you don't have that thing where you gird up your loins for a return to the soul-destroying drudgery that is your way of making your way in this world that you have on a Monday. You don't have that, okay, here we go thing that's on a Monday. You kind of let your guard down a little bit on a Tuesday, which is why on a Tuesday, I kind of tend to feel it's that day of the week where we need a little fun, a little levity the most. So, you know, uh, because it's that day where the week seems completely interminable and we need a little bit of fun and levity in our lives, I thought we would talk about how uh, more than one third of Americans are on welfare at the moment. Yeah, that's cheery. Um, Also, I thought we'd talk a little bit about Urban Outfitters. Have you seen this blood-spattered Kent State sweatshirt that they were hawking? Yeah, I'm going to go out on a limb and uh, guess that's not okay. And in the spirit of staying light, tight, and bright, as they like to say in radio management, Hey, keep it late, tight, and bright. Uh, we'll talk about football players beating their kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we will. I'm AD. I'm the host of your show. I'm joined by super producer to the stars, Barry Funkhauser. You can tweet us both and join in the conversation. At ADSXE is where I am. At Funk FM is where he bees. And if you're a new listener to the show, know this. When you tweet along with the show... I don't really consider you to be a listener. I consider you to be a contributor. Uh, There used to be this thing in radio and media. In fact, we bailed on a town hall meeting. We bailed on a town hall meeting, Funkhauser and I, where we were learning about the future of our company, Clear Channel slash iHeartRadio. And uh, basically... We're all looking toward the future. What does the future mean? Well, not entirely sure, but one thing we do know is that entertainment is no longer a one-way street. Nope, it's not. used to be this thing where I would talk, you would listen, or you'd watch TV, and that would be it. And the people uh, that were making the television would probably never really hear from you. Now, everything's interactive. Every single website is... (laughs) Every single website is linked to Facebook, so there's a comment section on literally everything. We used to invite feedback. Now we can't get away from it. Now, if we're sucking, if we're messing up, people that are watching, listening, hearing, reading, whatever the hell you want to call it, are letting us know exactly how we're screwing up or how we're doing well. And I just wanted to say... For that reason, if you tweet along with the show, you're part of the future. And you're not just somebody that listens. You're not a listener. You're not a fan. (laughs) You're a contributor to the show. And I thank you for hanging out and being part of the show and being part of my radio family. Fughauser, A, how are you? B, shall we take a look at what's going on in the news? Ooh, okay. (laughs) I'm doing okay. I I, uh, killed the bug that was was, uh, killing me. No longer sick. Oh, good. Glad to hear it, he says, achy and on his fourth dose of Mucinex, <laughs> trying to beat whatever it is you gave me. Thanks. Thanks very much. Yeah, Glad to hear you're okay. That's wonderful news for you. <laughs> How did you do it? Orange juice? I don't know. I guess so. Yeah. Lots and lots of alcohol. My, right, yeah. You know, I know so many people that were... Uh, I can't really say the name of the guy because I think he's in recovery. But when I was a kid, I was on tour with this band and I got sick. And the lead singer of the headlining band was like, I'll show you how to drink through a cold. You'll never know. 
and uh, years later, um, he discovered that while drinking through a cold helped him cope with the cold, it uh, severely diminished his coping skills for the rest of life, so he had to quit. So now he probably takes Mucinex like the rest of us, or, or something. Or NyQuil, as Dennis Leary <laughs> calls it, that 13th step in the 12-step recovery program. Are you drunk? No, no, I have a cold. <clears throat> What is going on in the world? Well, uh, the new hosts of The View include Rosie O'Donnell and former Uh Republican White House uh, spokesperson Nicole Wallace, whoever that is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, it's interesting. They're re-staffing up The View. (sighs) Didn't Rosie do a whole bunch of stuff in, like, TV and then go away and we were all happy and now she's back in there? She had that whole thing, The Rosie O'Donnell Show. Like, that that was hers. I don't know. Like, I don't necessarily like watching Rosie on TV. Like, it, it, I don't know. I've never seen her on television and said, hey, that was enjoyable. I would like to watch that again. It's kind of not my thing. But I really appreciate Rosie O'Donnell for doing what she does, which is kind of sort of like living on her terms. You know, she sort of does what she wants to do whenever she wants to do it. And um, I think coming back to television is sort of something she's got. Like, I think she might be actually interesting to watch because when Rosie's doing something, she's got FU money. She doesn't ever have to work again if she doesn't want to. So when, when Rosie O'Donnell Donald does something, she sort of does it on her terms. Whether you agree with those terms or not, uh, it, it makes for interesting viewing occasionally, so I don't know. Uh, it's not like I watch the screeching harpies that call themselves a view on a regular basis, but I might actually sort of like... <laughs> I might actually see how this works out. But yeah, new hosts of The View, Rosie O'Donnell and former Republican White House spokesperson Nicole Wallace. Rosie and Nicole are very different. One spent years servicing Bush. (laughs) The other one's Nicole Wallace. If you like what you're hearing, tweet the show at ADSXE. AD on iHeartRadio. Yeah, I do what I want, when I want, how I want. Yeah, I do what I want, when I want, how I want. More than one third, one third, 33 and a third percent of Americans are currently receiving welfare benefits. 50 years after the war on poverty was first declared, yeah, I would say it's about time for a new offensive. Uh, Urban Outfitters apologized for selling a blood-spattered Kent State uh, sweatshirt. And uh, Minnesota Vikings are are allowed to uh, beat their kids and stay in the game. How do you feel about that? We'll get into all of it. And I'm not saying it's right or wrong, uh, but uh, we'll get into all of it, or at least we'll try to get into all of it. As soon as we uh, get through the events of today in our segment, My Witness News, in no way, shape, or form fair, certainly not balanced. Funkhauser, kindly continue. What else is going on in the world? Well, I've got my Psy News again. Uh, again, I-, I will say unto you, every single time you call her my Psy as opposed to Miley Cyrus, you should be forced to tuck your twig and berries and walk around like that, preferably in a little floor of print number like the pretty little girl that you are. <laughs> at this point, it's just a stutter that I have. I, I twitch at Target and go, my Psy! <laughs> anyway, she's uh, posted a photo of herself naked and in the shower. Yeah, Miley Cyrus naked and in the shower. It's Miley as you've never seen her before. Showering. Doesn't seem like it's something that she does on a regular basis. Uh, Reminder to self, do not drink and read the news at the same time. Because I almost (laughs) spilled coffee everywhere. (laughs) <laughs> Robin Thicke is in the news. He uh, oh wait, did we have an actual spit take on the show? Al- like almost, we were ah. seconds away from uh, needing a new keyboard. As somebody who uh, prides himself in occasionally coming up with the uh, the odd ha ha or he he, making somebody spit their drink out because they're laughing, that's 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 pretty much the highest compliment someone can receive. So uh, yay us. Go on. Robin Thicke revealed he's been dealing with a serious drug problem. Right. (laughs) In fact, one time he got so high, he actually believed he could get his estranged wife back by writing a creepy song that made him sound like a terrifying stalker. Oh, God. I know you want me. I know (laughs) you need me. Come on and get me. 
<laughs> let me see. Uh, uh, let me see if I can sing a song about date rape. <laughs> let me see if I can sing a song about date rape. Grope other women on camera and get my wife back by writing a path. Oh, did you? What was that thing? There was like a one eight hundred flowers bouquet that Robin. Th- it was like the Robin Thick bouquet. <laughs> like he was trying to. Uh, he, he he was trying to make. He was trying to monetize his. Uh, he was trying to monetize his pleas to his estranged wife to come back. It's like, if uh, if the broad doesn't come back to me, at least I'm going to make my commission off this sweet Robin Thick bouquet of 1-800-Flowers. Like the, I'm sorry I grew up other women and sing a song about date rape bouquet. Yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. I, I think that his uh, somewhat tenuous grasp on reality comes directly from being the son of Alan Thicke. Have you ever seen that guy talk for more than 30 seconds? Yeah, no, I, I no. I, yeah. I almost do an impression of him, but I'm really bad <laughs> at it. He's significantly out there. Now, what else? Uh, a pop-up coffee shop in New York City replicates Central Perk from our favorite TV show, Friends. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, no, I heard about this. They've got a bunch of items on display from the show, like things that haven't been seen in public in years, like the uh, the famous orange couch, the ceramic dog statue, and uh, uh, David Schwimmer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you like Friends? Yeah. yeah. Sort of. I don't know. I mean, I, I went on a binge watch uh-huh. and, and watched all the ones that were titled The One With, and then fill in the blank. I think they were all called that. They were all that, I think. I saw like a hundred of them and then said, okay, I need to do something better with my life. (laughs) But I did, uh, my friend had a, uh, was uh, doing like the, he was a tour guide for, I think it was Warner Brothers, wherever they did Uh it. And uh, there was a stop where you can see all the central perk. They like reset it up in a, in a little corner of the tour. And then you, oh, well, there's all the stuff from central perk, like the sign and the couch and everything. Oh, that's kind of cool. I don't know. I sort of, uh. I don't know if I really liked Friends all that much growing up. I thought it was funny because it was like a little racier than what you'd seen on TV. It's hard kind of looking at Friends and being like, ooh, yeah, that's racy. But it, it kind of was. Like, there was this one... Do you remember that scene where Ross and Rachel first get together and uh, they're drinking juice out of boxes and they go to the planetarium to do it and uh, they roll over um, to uh, to get busy and Rachel goes to Ross, oh, honey, that's okay. He's like, what? Oh no, that that was just the juice box. I was just <laughs> like, "Wow, a premature finishing joke on network television." That was kind of that was kind of a, a thing. My uh, my young mind felt like I was watching something subversive on TV after I heard that joke, so I sort of latched onto it a little bit. And I don't know. I, I kind of feel like some of the writing on that show really was good. Like some of the writing was was. Yeah, yeah, that, that was some prize winning stuff. Say what stuff. you want about the writing. The temperature of the studio was my favorite part of the show. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, there was an awful lot of peanut smuggling going on <laughs> uh, in that show that might have contributed to its success. The one thing I notice is, like, when I watch old episodes now, sometimes I'm like, ah, that wasn't as funny as I remember it being. Or, ha-ha, that was hilarious. No wonder this show was in business so long. And I think a lot of it holds its own today. But you look at Seinfeld, and Seinfeld was a little bit more neutral and timeless in terms at least of how people dressed in that show there weren't any bold fashion statements being made by the cast so like the jeans and t-shirts and 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 like everything on Seinfeld kind of sort of looks like someone could be wearing it today even though it came from earlier than Friends but when I look at Friends I'm just like holy high-waisted jeans people actually used to like like basic (laughs) You know, you know the uh, the peanuts that were being smuggled that attested to the temperature of the studio on Friends. Well, Rachel and Monica had their jeans hiked up to right underneath that. Like, just it could not have been comfortable. High waisted jeans. On men, they lift and separate things that are not intended to be lifted nor separated. Yet they wore them. Did you? Uh, do you ever wear high waisted jeans, Funkhauser? No, but I was down with Hammer Time. Or those big old, big old parachute pants. <laughs> oh, you had, you had, you had hammer pants. Uh huh. Uh huh. Oh, yeah. Wow. I don't know if I should be proud of that, but it, you know, you know, I don't know if it's a source of pride, but it's an interesting thing to have lived through and taken part in. I did not have hammer pants. Uh, what else? Mickey Rourke turns sixty-two years old today. Yeah, no word yet on how that's possible. Um. 
Did, did, did I ever tell you my Mickey Rourke story? No, I don't really... I can't remember who he is, first off. But Mickey Rourke? Um, I, he was an actor. He was in a bunch of stuff in the 80s and 90s, and then he went crazy and...